<clears throat> if you grew up in the South, you know that you're really not somebody's friend until you've had a meal together. Mm -hmm. And the same is true in a lot of other cultures, that an invitation to the table is in fact an invitation to friendship. And if the meal goes well, the friendship goes deeper. If the meal doesn't go well, then the friendship could be over. Um, that's how important, especially in the Middle East, uh, the custom of sharing a table is, and how extraordinarily important it is. So it is of no surprise that Jesus uses the analogy of a meal to talk about intimacy or friendship with him and through him into the very Holy Trinity of God. The, the backup prior to this back and forth has to do with the fact that Jesus has just fed 5,000. That's where John puts it in his gospel. And out of this comes this long discourse, the fourth one in John's gospel, about who he is as the one who gives his flesh for the life of the world, that he who eats of this bread will live forever. I want to say to you that it would be a mistake to somehow sacramentalize this passage and divorce it from a living relationship with Christ, because I really don't believe that's what Jesus means. Maybe if he were an atomist and came out of medieval Europe, he might believe that. But we're talking about a first century rabbi where all of the conversations happened around me <coughs> that had any importance to them whatsoever. And so what he's really describing here is that he is inviting us into by using the analogy of partaking of his flesh and giving himself for the light of the world. He's inviting us in a relationship where, number one, we have to come face to face with our own starvation. That we are hungry. And that we are hungry for what it is that he has to offer. A living, intimate, personal, transforming friendship that gets at the very heart of who we are and invites us to get into the very heart of who he is. It cannot be friendship at a distance. Mm -hmm. The meal analogy denies that possibility, or the radical nature of his language. Unless you eat of my flesh. We're not just talking about this kind of idea <coughs> about God. We're talking about something that has substance to it. We're talking about entering into something that is deep, and personal and intimate, not at a distant, not philosophical, but personal, visceral, and very, very real. See, the problem that Jesus was having at the time with the Jews is that he would make these statements, and they would literally, uh, to quote my friend Jim Spencer, they would literally get into their head, <laughs> and they would say, we don't understand how this could be. And not understanding that what Jesus is using is metaphor and analogy in a way that's far larger than any kind of literalism of how do I become a cannibal, that's absolutely repulsive to me. That's not what we're talking about here. Instead, what Jesus is doing is saying, in the midst of how you understand God, far off, distant, and only one with whom you can have any relationship, unless you adhere to the full corporate nature of obedience to the law. Jesus instead, feeding the 5,000 who had no, you know, some were okay, some were not okay perhaps according to the law, he just fed them. Mm -hmm. And out of that said, this is what I do. Only what I'm doing is that I'm not just giving bread here, I'm giving me. If, will you receive me? Will you receive me? Not just physical bread to take care of your physical needs. See, that was Simon Magus' problem. <coughs> he, he wanted to employ the power of the Holy Spirit to his own benefit. And there are plenty of teachings about intercessory prayer that give you exactly that impression. God is the great vending machine, and if I put the right coins in, meaning if I say the right formulas, then guess what I can do? I can access what I need. And that kind of mechanistic understanding of prayer is entirely foreign to the New Testament. 
It's not that you get less in a relationship with Jesus in intercessory prayer. Just the opposite. You get more. Because who you get is Him. And that's the most important piece to receive of all. So, you can't read John or any of these discourses in essence in that part of your brain that seeks to understand a methodology or a formula or even a literal sense of what he means. Instead, what you have to do is look at metaphor and analogy and the invitation that's behind the metaphor and the analogy. I will feed you. I will give you my very self. I won't just merely give you something to make you happy. What you get is a relationship. Yeah. You get me. He who eats of this bread will live forever. That's far more, you see, than just getting a temporary answer to prayer. That has to do with a living, I will never leave you or forsake you. Nothing can take you out of my hand. Relationship. It's exactly the same thing that Jesus was trying to do in the story of the woman at the well. When they're talking about water, and he said, no, no, no. What I give you actually literally is a well inside that springs up into eternal life. So much greater, so much more extraordinary than being able to at least just get the, the water out of the well. Same here. I'm not just here to give you bread, although he does give bread. It's not a divorcing from the reality of the fact that I'm hungry and I need to be fed. But I'm giving you me, which is more than you could ever ask it or imagine. And sure, you'll get the physical provision. You know, he didn't give them an idea. He literally fed them bread and fish in the feeding of the 5,000. And their physical bodies were satisfied. So I'm not talking about something that's divorced from the physical. But what I'm saying is that it's so much more than that. It's, it is physical, but it's more. It's not just an idea, it's more. It's not merely a metaphor, it's all that Jesus has to offer us. But on his terms, are you willing to come to the table of my fellowship and be my friend? Are you willing to come to me as you are? Admitting all of your own hunger and all of your own thirst. Are we, you willing to be fed by me? Admitting that you really can't feed yourself that which I so dearly and desperately want to give to you. Then come, dine at the table, eat of this flesh. You will live forever. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. So it's not mechanistic. It's not merely physical. It's not merely philosophical. It's a person. And that is the very gift of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Amen.